Greetings. Today is a sort of what sold slash bolo video. And today is Monday. These are all things that sold over the weekend. And they're all things that are kind of small and inexpensive, but quite easy to come by in most cases and sold pretty quickly. So I will go through them and tell you what about them is below worthy or be on the lookout for ish. So number one, <laughs> this is a super not interesting looking postcard of a pipe organ. And I say it's not interesting in that it's very brown. It's very dark. It's got kind of a crease. It's not flashy at all, but it's, um, very specific. It's the famous auditorium in Ocean Grove, New Jersey. And I looked up what that was actually called. Uh, no, I looked up what the organ was called, the Hope Jones Organ Company, Belmire, New York. And I think this was at, a, at some time the largest pipe organ. And so this is something someone was looking for. And this sold the day it was listed. And it sold for my asking price of $9.99. I didn't have high hopes for this, but it went. So good to know. Probably could have marked it $12.50 and it would have gone. Next. This is a trade card. And it's... What's interesting about it is that it has appeal to several different audiences. The front you see is this a home in Maine, birthplace of G.E. Mitchell, Kennebunk, Maine. And I actually did not look up who that is, but it's obviously somebody whose birthplace is worth noting. And so we have this Maine scene, slightly unusual for a trade card. So there's that. And then on the back, we have four different uh, quack medicine advertisements that are quite amusing if you read them. We got kidney plasters and rheumatic plasters and corn and bunion plasters and belladonna plasters. This seems especially poisonous if you ask me, but whatever. <laughs> we'll not worry about that. Um, so that's the quack medicine appeal and that's a pretty good one. People definitely collect this stuff. And finally, there's this stamped on uh, mark from the store that was giving these out as a promotion and presumably sold some of these Mitchell's plasters. And this is a store in Lynn, Massachusetts. So that is also a nice old New England town that people might also collect quite near me, actually. So people might be collecting quack medicine or Lynn Mass or this drugstore's name or this last name as it is or uh, Maine or this person whose birthplace it is. So lots of cross appeal on this one and it sold I believe I think I had $18.50 on this and it sold for $14.99 and I probably um, sent them an offer. I'm not sure I can't remember but anyway this was not listed for very long and it's old. Oh, Sophie is leaving. She has things to do. Okay, next. Um, this postcard is an example of hotels and motels, as I call them in my indexing system. So clearly there are gazillions and zillions of hotels and motels in every country and especially in the US. and. Not every single one is going to sell, you know, lickety split, but there's definitely, you know, a collector for many of them. Somebody who has some connection, you know, having stayed there in the past or their family owned it or it's their name or their town or whatever. So I do like listing hotels and motels and I'll list these, you know, linen types or even, you know, definitely earlier ones. And I'll even list chrome ones if they're um, kind of 
Well, they're usually pretty kitschy if they're like 60s, 70s, 80s, so they have an appeal that way. And unless there's something super special, super old, uh, super nice about it, I'm going to list them pretty cheap. So this one was $12.50, which it sold for, and it sold right away, like somebody had an alert out for this place or this town or whatever. This is High Mount, New York, and New York is not a high selling state for postcards. So the actual hotel factor played into the sale. And this is the back. That's not really that interesting. You can see it has a postmark from the 40s. So this isn't, you know, ancient. OK, next. Here's another category I love selling, um, which is miniature books. And there's lots that are uh, Victorian or uh, sort of turn of the century Edwardian or whatever that are, you know, really fancy and nice and those do well. This one, however, is like a tiny little paper bag. It's not that old. I don't know if I, I don't know if it was marked as to age, but it looks sort of, I don't know, 30s, 40s, 50s to me. Could be older, could be newer. I doubt it's older, but it's tiny. It's two inches and it's a teeny little paperback and there's nothing to it. Like I mailed it in an envelope, a rigid envelope. And this has the cross appeal of religious content and also being a miniature book. And possibly this publisher is of some interest in some way to the people of Elgin, Illinois. I don't know. Uh, this had been for sale for a while, but it did sell for the asking price of $14.50, and it was super easy to ship, <laughs> which was nice. So miniature books are definitely something to look out for. There are other miniature books I have listed that are much more expensive and much fancier, but even these little, um, you know, ones that seem kind of not that exciting also sell. And especially the smaller, the better. This one is, you know, pretty standard miniature book size. I think the definition is up to like four inches or something, if there is a definition. But this is a nice small one and it still has a readable print size. So it's still, you know, utilitarian. So miniature books, something to look for. Here's an interesting one. This is uh, just a receipt from 1891. Not much detail. I mean, it, it has some valuable detail in that it has the place, Musa Valley, Rhode Island, the date, and the two the names of the two people involved. Um, right there. And it just says that one paid the other what they owed them, which was $35. No, it was $4.35. And so that's all that is. The other side looks like this. It was in someone's records folded and they wrote what it was on the outside so they could access it, which was handy because this is a more readable version of the name inside. Legible, I should say. So... Um, now normally something like this might sit forever, but I sold this to a person who I believe collects, um, information regarding this place or this person or both, and they bought it right away when I listed it and it sold for $14.50. And I should add, this is quite small. This is, um, you know, when folded in half, it's maybe two by four inches at the most, um, you know, maybe the size of a large index card, maybe it's very small, it's a little scrap of paper. So don't discount things like this. I know you might be tempted to put them in a lot or sell them as a scrapbook ephemera, but sometimes people actually are looking for these specific sort of documents. So at least give them a try as what they are before you resort to um, lotting them in a more bulk way. Here's the next thing, another postcard. 
and this is another um, hotel actually I don't know if I have a different story to tell on this one only that again this one sold really fast I think somebody must have had an alert out for this one as well um, maybe for the name Rosenbergs or the place which is pretty small and specific and it also has a casino and I think that's an important keyword to list um, keywords I mean <laughs> casinos people find interesting so and also that this this is a bird's eye view did I write that no I should have I mean it's sort of a bird's eye view uh, it does have a map like quality to it where the street the uh, signs are almost like map labels like you can see this is the entrance and that's the grand something I don't know you can look at that within a magnifying glass and this is the casino and there's the old cars so this has a lot going for it even though it's you know again not in the best shape has some staining and is you know just a hotel in New York <laughs> And there's the back. So that's another vote for selling hotel and motel postcards. And another postcard. Well, we are postcardy this week. So this one uh, sold for $35. And it is a ship, specifically the whaleback steamer Christopher Columbus, at home in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. And I think this is a good example of weird places well weird to me i hadn't heard of manitowoc i don't know if it's a big place or a small place i'm guessing small i don't know but you know wisconsin postcards aren't super common also ships are great and this is a nice view of this one we have the uh you know the flag with the name and can tell it's a one funnel and we have the american flag and I don't know, this is a nice detail. And this one, again, sold right away. So I list a lot of postcards of ships and some sit and some sell right away. And I think probably the ones that do best are the ones from weird places, very specific ships, very specific, um, unusual, uh, you know, ship place combinations. I always think the ones that are the big famous steamships are going to sell the best, but those, the, you know, they made a lot of those, so not as much. Next, here is a button, and somebody was asking me in the video comments on a button video I made, or shall I say, <laughs> accusing me of not talking about how they sell. And it's kind of complicated, so maybe I'll try to make a video about that at some point. But just to say, these fancy buttons, as I call them, uh, do sell. And they might not sell super fast because, like other things, you're looking for the right collector. But they do sell. So this is a single button, and it sold for $16.75. I think I had it priced at $18.50. And this is not incredibly uncommon. Like this is something you could find in a bag of buttons. What's unusual about it is that it is large. It's an inch and a half across button. And it's probably, you know, it's, it's 19th century, but it's not crazy uncommon. Picture buttons will turn up in any sort of decent collection. Um, this is what the back looks like. This is the size. So yes, uh, ladies or fancy buttons do sell even one at a time. And you know, I often lot them, but as many singles sell as lots. So there's that. Um, I guess I should also say on that, if you can ever identify the kind of flower, it's really handy to sell things that have flowers on them. So people look for specific um, flower types. So this is a peony 
I don't think my Indian inspired border keyword did anything like that's just neither here nor there, but I was just being descriptive. I think peony and the size and Victorian were the important parts. All right, here is another one. This is a book from 1906. It's called Daily Strength for Daily Needs. It's um, a religious book. It's kind of like inspirational bits. <laughs> inspirational like a nice thought a day or one of those type of things and as you see it's kind of in rough shape I mean it's got its integrity but it's it's a white book a white cloth covered book and it's stained and it the spine needs a little TLC on the inside there but it's actually a very attractive book and it, it's even more attractive in person than in the pictures, so I hope the person who bought this is pleased. Um, it's got this nice gold patterning on the front. And, uh, you know, sometimes I would find a book like this and think to sell it um, as sort of a craft supply or cut out the pages and sell a cover um, for junk journaling or do something like that with it, but this one was definitely worth listing, even for not a super high amount, as a book. So that's good to know. I think, you know, religious books actually do really well. And they are sort of, although not something that interests me personally, something I do really enjoy selling. So there's that. This one... I think is really funny. This is just a little slip of paper. It's a tax receipt from 1877 in where Connecticut. And what's really <laughs> great about it is that, you know, it has your sort of normal like state and town tax and poll tax and blah, blah, but it has a dog tax. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if everyone had to pay it. I kind of hope so, like community supported dogs but I doubt it. Anyway, this sold really fast and I like to think that it's because I put dog tax in the title. I don't know. <laughs> um, again, this is a teeny little slip of paper with, with like some writing on the back. And like this is, I don't know, like three by four maybe, smaller than an Ingevix card. And it sold for eighteen fifty in a day. So again, don't so uh, don't neglect your little itty bitty bits, <laughs> especially if they're you know from the eighteen seventies. Like read them, see if there's anything that's gonna sell it. I mean, somebody could have bought this because of the names or the town or anything else, but I like to think it's because dog tax is kind of awesome. All right, uh, here is another religious item. I th this is a, a bookmark, or I, I think it could also be like a pointer you would use when you're reading your Bible, but that's largely supposition. And this is, it's just a little metal thingy, and I'm pretty sure this came in a book, in a lot of books, but I pulled it out and I listed it separately, and again, this... Uh, I took a best offer. I probably had it listed for fourteen fifty. You know, it's really nothing. It's like this really lightweight metal, and it's not. I don't know how old it is, but you know, twentieth century at some point, and it's not super fancy. I didn't look up this manufacturer, but you know, whatever. So again, religious items. I probably could have. Well, I guess that's Jesus, the Lamb. Um, but you know, if it were a saint, I'd try to point out which one it, it was and all that. Um, so yes, religious items, even small ones do pretty well. And finally, speaking of small things, this dice shaker is a, like a Cracker Jack prize, or it probably actually came in a gumball machine. And... 
I'm pretty sure I took an offer on this for $14.50. I forget. Around that. But this thing is, you know, the size of my thumbnail. And I, well, the size of two of my thumbnails, maybe. I don't have very long thumbnails. Um, I bought this in a box of of Cracker Jack slash gumball machine charms that there are hundreds and hundreds. Um, I did pay, I think like $80 for it, but it's like a big box. I've only listed a few so far. And, you know, if each one sells for over $10 or around $10, we're, we're good. <laughs> so that's just another small thing that doesn't seem like it would be worth anything and that's not true and again this is vintage this is old i don't know when it's from 50s maybe uh 40s 50s 60s it's not really my area of expertise but I sort of know what they look like and can figure out how to list them so that's a nice you know easy thing to ship and fun to sell so that's my bolos of tiny things that sold over the weekend that are worth keeping an eye out for. It's not that any will make you a, a mint in and of itself, but, you know, easy to obtain in bulk and to ship and to list. And if you sell a lot of them, you're doing well. So I hope that's helpful. Please um, like and subscribe and take care. Thank you.